What happens if we spend too much time on screens? The school is working to push graduation rates back to where they were before the pandemic. A cyber roadshow visits Aberdeen. And sports teams are in or nearing the postseason. Hi, I'm Kobe Dowen. And I'm Courtney Thorstensen, and you're watching Eagle Zone. Devices are helping us in many ways, but can there be too much of a good thing? Eagle Zone's Jacob Kohlhaus has looked into screen time and how it can affect us. Jacob? Computers, phones, tablets, and screens are a part of everyday life. But for us as students, how much should we be using them? You might see students and teachers go back and forth about having phones in class. But what helps kids? I mean, there are both positives and negatives to phones in the classroom. It's not that screens are bad. The question is the amount of time we spend on them. The National Institution of Health posts research about what experts in the field are finding. According to their research, screens can improve education and learning. But too much time spent in front of a screen can hurt a student's focus, control, and ability to switch between tasks. Screens can also get in the way of academics. There is a direct correlation between phone usage and your grades. So if you're constantly on your phone, your grades are probably not going to be as high as they probably could be. You might pass the class, you might learn a couple of things, but if you actually put your phone away and focused for those 86 minutes on just doing one thing, you would probably learn a lot more. And too much screen time can get in the way of social and emotional growth. That can mean a rise in sleep disorders, depression, and anxiety. At Central High School, eSports coach Andrew Cobbs recognizes those issues. He wants to see the sport help students who might spend a lot of time in front of a screen and develop other important skills. I think eSports really helps, actually, because it channels the students' needs and or wants to participate and play video games but it channels that into a positive setting where now we're actually a team. You're socializing with other people. The National Institution of Health also shared information about screens and early childhood development. More screen time can also mean less interactions between parents and kids, and that can also affect language development. That study Jacob talked about suggests adults can reduce the possible negative impacts of excessive screen time and promote children's healthy development by encouraging alternative activities that stimulate development. We know the first round of qualifiers for the National Speed and Debate Tournament. Emmy Bangs will represent Aberdeen and Lincoln Douglas. Ashley Crouch and Daisy Williams in informative speaking. Brianna Woolman and Carla Garcia in oratory. Kayla Bringenberg and Ryland Johnson in international extemp. Damon Sheets in humor and Mac Compton in program oral interpretation. Central Show Choir returns to Aberdeen with another win. Eagle Express is grand champion of the Shake the Lakes event in Spirit Lake, Iowa. The group also earned best vocals, best choreography, best band, and people's choice. Jackson Rott earned best bass soloist. Aberdeen Central has historically enjoyed high school graduation rates, and it wants to see those numbers pick back up after a post-pandemic dip. Eagle Zone's Ethan Getz joins us with that story. The Aberdeen School District is seeing a dip in graduation rates the last couple of years has been down compared to the rates the school is used to seeing. Two years ago, it was 90%. Last year was 84%. At Aberdeen Central High School, Assistance Principal Jake Phillips says there could be different reasons, but the timeline points to the pandemic. That's probably the biggest thing that we've seen is that, that steady decrease since COVID. Um, because prior to that, our numbers were really strong at that 90% or better. And actually, more on the better side, looking back the past five years, in 18-19 school year, Aberdeen's graduation rate was 5% above the state average. Same for 1920. The next year was 4% above. Two years ago, it was on par with the state average and last year, 7% lower. Philip says there isn't a single reason that covers all students who drop out, but adds that lower graduation rates show up the same time more students move on to online learning. And so some of those students didn't progress as well as we had liked or that, that they had hoped for originally. Um, so some of them didn't graduate on time. We spoke with students who didn't want to talk about it on camera, but shared it was hard to keep pace through the online learning. One of this year's seniors said he only earned half the credits he was supposed to as a freshman online. He came back to in-person learning, caught up, and is now on pace to graduate. Whatever the reason for falling behind on credits, Phillips says school system can help, but communication between families and schools is key. 
Um, if we know what's going on or have an idea what the students are dealing with, we can put together a plan for each individual student to help them get their diploma. It might not be in the time frame that they would like or that we would like to see them finish their, their high school career in, but uh, we will help them achieve their academic goals and help them finish uh, what they have started. I do a project in class where we look at high school graduation rate versus mean income or median income. And there's a very high correlation where in the states where there's a very low graduation rate, there's a very low median income. So it also is going to affect how much money you make over your life. You may be able to exist fine here in Aberdeen, and you might marry someone, and your two incomes allow you to exist here perfectly fine. But over time, you're going to make less money. You're going to have less life experiences. Your children are going to have less life experiences. So it's best to just go through the process and finish. The school has different options for students who are behind and want to finish. Completing classes online, attending night school, there's summer school online, and working on incomplete classes or working with teachers to retake tests or assignments for failed classes. Phillips calls this a joint effort between students, schools, and families. Whether they're freshmen or students who've been in high school four years and haven't finished yet. We're working with 14 to 18, 19 year olds and we're trying to help them develop the skill to advocate for themselves and become independent. But some students just need a little bit more uh, push or shove from their family and their educators to make sure that they stay on, on par with what they want to accomplish. Attendance has also gone down since the pandemic and that has a connection with success in school. The Aberdeen School District has a campaign in place to push those numbers back to where they were before COVID. Thanks, Ethan. It shows you worked hard on that story. If you left high school without your diploma, you can also earn your GED. We checked with the State Department of Education and it counts GEDs when calculating the high school completion percentage. So get that done and watch your work add to next year's graduation rate. The French classes at Central are celebrating with others around the world. They sported masks and ate French food to celebrate Mardi Gras. They also had some staff members enjoying the celebration. This comes after the group celebrated the Winter Carnival in January. That's the famous car carnival in Quebec, Canada. And Aberdeen teachers earned recognition in the state. James Stearns earned the Distinguished Science Award. The distinction is given to a person whose dedication and contributions have impacted and improved the South Dakota Science Teaching Association and the STEM Ed Conference. During his recognition, Stearns is described as a visionary, a trailblazer, and an irreplaceable pillar of our science teaching community. Central students and some others in the area are learning more about tech jobs that can be waiting for them. Instructors from Dakota State University visited the A-Tech Academy for a cyber roadshow. Eagle's own Peyton Head joins us with that story. Peyton? That event may expose students to new ideas and maybe even new career paths. It brought multiple experts from their fields to demonstrate what they do. This day camp for students is part of an overall effort to promote the cyber field in South Dakota. We have a cyber roadshow. It's from through the Governor's Cyber Academy at Dakota State. And so uh, we're working on expanding awareness of cyber career possibilities and then access to um, some of the different fields and education pathways. And so we're um, coming here to, to showcase some of the different, um, different concepts and so students can learn about uh, different pieces of the field. Venetia Hellman says that only about 4% of high school students are taking a computer class every year and that they are wanting to expose kids to some of the different possibilities in the technology field. Uh, we're really excited to be here and we're, we're um, hopeful that this will just kind of open, open some eyes and that we'll be able to continue to uh, connect with students here and, and bring them to campus or come back again. The road show I thought was pretty interesting. I mean, we got to do certain kind of coding, learning how AI intelligent works, is trained, how to solder. One message the group is trying to send is this. It doesn't matter if you're eyeing a job in the cyber field. Learning about it will help you regardless. They're going to apply to all different careers as, as people are picking out what they do and so um, hopefully this just gives them some exposure and, and piques some interest. And teach them important lessons. Jiren Caden Galbraith says he's much more aware of how careful he should be when working online. Mainly got to learn how easily it is to actually break into unsecure internet and eavesdrop on whatever people send. The event may have already ended, but Dakota State hosts Cyber Camp for both middle school and high school students during the summer to those who are interested in it. 
You can find out more information about the camps on the Dakota State University website. Thanks, Peyton. We'll be right back after these messages created by media production students. See you later, Mom. Oh, and remember... Reduce, reuse, and always recycle. Uh, okay, Mom. How'd you do on that test? Man, I did all right. Yo, that test was mad stupid anyway, man. Oh, you're not gonna recycle that? Recycle? Reduce, reuse, and always recycle. Nah! Welcome back. It's another week full of basketball and other sports. Eagles Zone's Gavin Bitts joins us with sports. We start off early in the week on Tuesday where the girls face the number 13 seeded Watertown Arrows. Starting off the game in the first quarter with the Eagles passing the ball around the arc when Ava Yeski, who finds Lauren Burkhart who hits the three to put the Eagles up four. Now to the second with the Eagles still up with Katie Withers trying to dribble around the court to make a play that's where she finds Emma Dorr who hits the very contested three to keep the Eagles lead. Now to the third, with the game now tied, that's when Amador returns the favor and finds Katie Withers in the corner to hit the three over her defender's head. The Eagles go on to lose this game, 46-55. Now on to Friday, where the boys face the lowest seeded Brookings Bobcats, starting off in the first quarter with the Eagles down when Parker Lamar drives to the hoop, then kicks it out to Jack Carlson who hits the deep three. Now to the end of the second quarter with the Eagles passing the ball around the arc, that's when Jacob Weishar finds Brendan Phillips, who hits the deep three to put the Eagles up. Coming out of halftime, and it's another game, and it's another Grant Fritz dunk, which shales the Eagles go to go on to win this game, 56-50. Over the weekend, the boys wrestling team traveled to Pier for Regent Wrestling. 12 out of 14 Golden Eagle wrestlers made the championship match, and all 14 of the wrestlers are advancing to the state tournament. And that's all for this episode of Eagle Zone. You can always watch our stories whenever you want by scrolling down to the Eagle Zone section of the school district website. That's Aberdeen.k12.sd.us. We don't have anything to leave you with this week. So, with Eagle Zone, I'm Kobe Dallin. And I'm Courtney Thorstensen. We'll see you next week.